Welcome to my fourth video of the forensic psychology topic um, in year two AQA psychology. This video is all about the psychological explanations of criminal behaviour, specifically psychodynamic. So according to Freud, um, personality is made up of three parts, the superego, the ego and the id. I always explain it as the id, is, the ego is you. This is you as you are functioning sort of every day. The id would be the devil on your shoulder that says, oh, you should do this, you should buy that, you should go and do something stupid. Um, so it's the devil on your shoulder. The superego would be the angel on your shoulder that says, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that, maybe we shouldn't buy this thing, maybe we should wait. Um, and it's sort of the, the, the part of your personality that says, mm, maybe not. Um, the superego is formed at the end of a phallic stage after the Oedipus complex has been resolved. So the phallic stage is around three to five, so it would be around age five that children develop a superego. The superego is an amalgamation of parents, teachers, society. Um, what we teach our children is right and wrong. So my little girl, for example, if she throws something at somebody, I would tell her off, I would say that's wrong, I would say we don't do that. Um, and so our superego comes from the people around us, but it's then internalised inside us, so that when we grow up, we then um, can make decisions um, without sort of thinking about the id and the ego, you know, we've got to have a balance of all of these things. So the superego is the angel on your shoulder, works on the morality principle, so what's right and wrong. Um, if you do something bad, the superego punishes you by you feeling guilty. Uh, and if you do something good, it rewards you by feeling proud. Um, so it's basically the part of your personality that keeps you in check. Um, going back to the previous video on um, cognitive explanations of crime and Kohlberg. Um, Kohlberg is very much a psychodynamic explanation. Um, he links to psychodynamic as well because his stage theory, he suggests that it's almost unconscious and that we sort of internalise it into ourselves. Um, so it very much links to what Freud was saying about personality. Um, so Blackburn in 93 theorised that if the superego is deficient or inadequate, then the id is not properly controlled. Now remember, the id is the devil on your shoulder saying, oh, let's go do this stupid thing. Um, the super, if the superego isn't strong enough to counterbalance this, then it can lead the individual to doing acts that are um, immoral or wrong or just downright stupid. Um, so he proposed three types of inadequate superego. The first is a weak superhero, superego. I always want to say superhero. Uh, super ego, if the same sex parent is absent during the phallic stage, then the child cannot model and internalise the um, super ego, which then makes criminal behaviour more likely. Remember, the super ego comes from our parents. Um, so if, they're, for example, the boy and the father is not around, they tend to identify with the father during the Oedipus complex. Um, and if they're not there, they can't do that. They've got nobody to model that behaviour from. Um, hello, where the mothers come into this? Clearly when uh, they're not important. Um, the deviant superego, superhero, if the child internalises a superego from a parent who has a deviant or immoral lifestyle, then they would see that behaviour, see that behaviour as acceptable, internalise it into themselves and then commit that behaviour thinking that it's okay. And therefore criminal behaviour is more likely. So um, a boy, for example, with a criminal father might um, not associate guilt with wrongdoing. So they do something naughty, or do something wrong or immoral um, and they don't get punished for it because the dad thinks that it's funny or he thinks that it's okay. Um, the third is an over-harsh superego, um, and this is where um, a healthy superego should be like a parent where there's boundaries um, and there's punishment if the child does something wrong, but they forgive the child. They don't, you know, they don't keep coming back to it and say, oh, you did this bad thing three weeks ago. They, they're forgiven for the things that they've done wrong, and the parent shouldn't um, hold it against the child. 
if the superego is too harsh, if the parent's too harsh with the child and they internalise that superego, um, it can lead to the individual being crippled with guilt and anxiety. Um, and then you could link that back to psychopathology and talk about how anxiety and depression are formed. Um, the individual's putting too much pressure on themselves, they're feeling guilty and anxious all the time, um, and it can lead them to commit crime because it's almost like they want to be punished because they feel like they've done something wrong, they feel guilty, um, so they feel like there should be a reason for it. So it almost pushes them to go and commit crime. Um, <clears throat> another psychodynamic um, theory would be the maternal deprivation theory. So if you think back to when you did attachment and you talked about Bowlby, Bowlby later on linked his attachment theory to criminal behaviour. Um, this is known as the maternal deprivation theory. So in 1944, he argued that the ability to form meaningful relationships in adulthood was dependent upon the child forming a bond, a warm, continuous relationship with their mother. Again, it's all the mother's fault. Um, so he viewed the mother and the child bond as being superior um, to any other bond, so including the bond with the father, um, grandparents and so on. Um, and if this bond doesn't form properly, um, then it can lead to them not being able to uh, form relationships properly later on. Um, if their relationship doesn't form properly with the mother, it can then lead to them becoming what's known as affectionless psychopaths. Um, affectionless psychopaths would have a lack of guilt, um, empathy and feeling for others. More likely to be in delinquents um, because they can't form that close relationship with others so they tend to very much be governed by themselves they don't really have that relationship with people around them um bowlby supports this with his 44 ju juvenile thieves study also done in 1944 um of these 44 14 of them uh ju juvenile delinquents were affectionless psychopaths 12 out of these 14 had experienced prolonged separation from their mothers during infancy, specifically in those first, first two years of life, um, whereas in the non-criminal group, only two experienced a similar separation with the mother. So Bowlby theorises that because they haven't formed that bond with the mother, that they um, then can't form close relationships with other people, they can't learn empathy, um, and then that's why they go on to commit criminal behaviour. Okay, so if you've got any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or bring your questions to class and we'll go through them. The next video will be on dealing with offender behaviour, custodial sentencing and behaviour modification. Thanks for watching. Bye.